Howdy friends, my name is Wesley. Thanks for stopping by my shop today. I opened my own shop and started a YouTube channel to show what life was like as a band instrument repair technician. I appreciate you coming around. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, it's the first Tuesday of the month. I've been getting a lot of tool questions asking what I bought, what I made, how did I get this or that. Today I'm working on some old school saxophones. This is a great opportunity to show some cool tools. So I think we'll call this like Cool Tool Tuesday, something like that maybe. And we'll see where this goes. We'll do one maybe every so often. I'll spotlight different tools that I use and that I like. Join on, this will be a pretty quick hit. So here's today's project, or one of them I should say. This is an old Selmer Bundy. Um, we've got some bell rim damage. The Keys don't close the way I want them to. We've got some low C key damage. You can see this doesn't even come close to the tone hole. These are the palm keys. What in the world? So that one, this one is completely ripped and gone. Is that a bassoon pad? And yep, that's the high palm F. It has rotted out as well. So this has its share of uh, issues, I guess you could say. This is what I want to discuss right here. This holder is the old style before they used plastic. And I've got a fix for this that I want to show. I've already cleaned up this solder joint here. Okay, Wes, what are these cool tools that you're talking about? Have you ever seen these? Do you know what these are for? These are for shrinking pearls. The way that this operates, I'm going to show you on this Freeze 116 and a matching pearl part. This is normally mounted on the key, right? And so what we'll see a lot of people do is just kind of glue in the pearl. Well, that's fine. It'll stay for a little while, right? But the pearl always just sets inside, so it comes back out. A permanent fix for this, this die is cut at the same taper that this pearl holder is. And these come as a set for different saxophone keys. You place this inside. This is called a shrinking die. This goes over the top while it's centered there. You take your rawhide mallet and you strike on the top. You remove the part from the die. It makes a perfect shrink. No muss, no fuss. Very cool trick. These are wonderful. Now, having shown you how to use a die to close a pearl, I'm, this is the set that I'm going to be using on that saxophone. This piece, this is the thumb rest. This is the matching convex pearl. So this is going to solder onto the horn. Then I will shrink this die over the top. More on that in a few minutes. Another one of my really cool saxophone tools that I just really love is my sneaky light. What I really love about the sneaky light, this tail measures at about four feet just for this section. And then you have 36 inches of LED light. Now what I like about that, come close, let me show you. The LEDs go all the way around. All right, let me turn off my, my light bulb so maybe you can see this better. Picks up better on the camera. LEDs that go all the way around the circle. Now the other cool thing, I can do upper stack, lower stack, all in one shot. Let me show you another one. So here's a Barry Sax. So we can come in through the E flat on this Barry and do the lower stack. We can do the upper stack. We can see in the gooseneck all the way around. That is really impressive. 
and it has really been a time saver in my work. It is super bright and it just allows me to see. The other thing that I like is down here, this almost, it's flexible, but it feels like it locks into place on the E flat. So when I turn the berry upright, it doesn't fall out. I know we've all had our those leak lights that will slide. They won't stay where we want them. So this has been a real game changer for me. Another question that I get is how talking about asking me how I do this fingers only method. See, this is not going down. So let me show a couple of tricks on that. Here we are back on our tenor sax, and this is the lower stack. And I only use my fingertips. I don't use any kind of opposable pressure like this. I can make these close if I want them to, but I want to see these leaks. Even when I know that the horn is in poor playing condition, has had some very questionable practices done to it. What I do is I unhook all of the stack springs. I want to see what the keys do under their own weight. My my left hand is pushing down the B flat. I'm actually going to go ahead and unhook it. So I start with my F sharp. I'm going to hold these up. I want to watch this close. Now you see how we're closing this side before this side. I want to take my torch. This is a piece of leather. And I just want to heat up the glue and push my pad a little bit. And now I want to watch that fall. You see, almost... Still hitting here just a little bit. Gonna go ahead and heat that glue up just a little bit. Piece of leather, and I'm flexing to get my pad to move. See that? Now that closes exactly the way I want it to close. That's an old pad, still got life in it, a playing condition can be just as good as an overhaul. Just have to take your time. Now let's look at this F key. So we have a pearl that's in the way here, right? If we just go to heat this, we're gonna burn this pearl. Another cool tool. And it does exactly what you think. When you go to use fire, you cover your pearl. Now you can safely heat the key and not burn the pearl. Now we can come back and I want to work that. Just pushing on that glue a little bit and look, just, just, just a little bit of time spent on that. And we have just a touch of a gap there. We're gonna heat this back up. Just a little bit of heat. Back under. I 
I see I went too far. I pushed up on this side. Touch of heat in, protect our pearl, and that's what we're looking for. See? Nice closure on its own. So these keys are done. This is what it was before. This is where we are now. So now I know that when I put the springs back on, the key is going to take care of itself. And when the key takes care of itself, that's when you get that pop, boom, 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 that pop that everybody asks me about. And that's how you do it on a playing condition. If it seals like this for me, with the lightest possible touch, I know it's going to seal when they play like this. Pearl protectors make your work look pro. Check it out. Okay, now I'm going to get this key off, the octave lever off, and get ready to solder this. Now once you have your new holder soldered into place, we just set our convex pearl in, but it's still loose inside. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our closing die. It's gonna go right over the top. We're gonna give a few light taps and it's in place. There we go. Makes a perfect tool for when you're doing these vintage horns. Looks great, comes out great, doesn't damage. Well, all right, everybody. Those are some of the cool tools that I like to use in my saxophone work. I think that it helps me do a better job. What are some things that you really like? I always enjoy reading the comments and interacting. I like it when we share different ideas. This last video on the bugle, someone told me how they made the tool to go down the mouth pipe. I just love that kind of stuff. Ingenuity and engineering and making things is a vital part of what we do. If you see something around my shop that I use and you have a question about how I made it or where I got it or anything like that, I'll make a video on it. Let's talk about it. If you like those cool tools that I was using, those are from Freeze Tools out of Battle Creek, Michigan. And I will leave the part numbers in the description down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Wes Lee, signing out.